wrong, Dan. Oh, it's not you. It's me, believe me. I got no right to do this. What's wrong with acting on your feelings, huh? Well, my feelings are a little confused right now, all right? It's not fair to you. Well, I don't hear me complaining or asking you for a lifetime commitment. Oh. oh, I'm such a nerd. Well, I can think of other ways to describe you, but uh, I don't think that's one of them. Well, try super nerd, as in not getting the picture, but it's obvious you're still hooked on Brenda, right? Where have you been? Where'd you go to? I've just been thinking about which downstairs bedroom Vicky would like to be in. Uh, well, uh, Clint and I already talked about that. Oh, you did? Okay, great. Yeah, I suppose we can always install an elevator if she wants to go back to her bedroom. You know, I'm... we've discussed that already, too. You have? Yes. Oh, in fact, everything's taken care of for Vicky's homecoming. Yeah, except for one thing. I think I'm going to move into the house. I'd like to be around to take care of Vicky. Megan, really, I think that Clint and I can take care of her. Yeah, well... Clint's running a newspaper, and besides, I'm Vicky's daughter. I'd like to help. Oh, is that it? You'd like to help? Or is that your way of saying that you don't trust me to take care of my own sister? Who is this? Where's my daughter? Hello? Who's there? What's wrong? I have no idea. Charlotte was supposed to be in my room alone. Then why isn't she answering the phone? Hello? Help! Somebody help! Oh, my God. Hello? Hello? What's wrong? Who was that? Go back inside that house. Are you out of your mind? Porter just fired me. Now, if I see him again, listen, I'm like... Listen, Alex, I saw a folder on his desk. It had Sarah's name on it. I want to know what's in the folder. If we took one step inside that house, he would throw us out in one second flat if we were lucky. Porter has the right to arrest us. I don't think he's going to be happy when he sees us. But if you use your charm, I think we can pull this off. You want me to charm him into giving me the file? No. I want you to plead with him to give you your job back. <laughs> Forget it. Let's get out of here. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. look on your face. Who was that on the phone? It was your father. My father? Yeah, and he was pretty upset when you realized you didn't answer the phone. Well, what, what did you say to him? I didn't say anything, nothing. I didn't know what to say to him. Oh, great, great. I was supposed to be here all alone. That's the way he planned it. You planned what? This whole fake party. What the hell is going on here, Charlotte? Where is your father? Why would he spend all this money to pretend like he was having a party? All I know is that he asked me to keep ordering more food and champagne, and that's exactly what I did. Why? Why, you didn't ask why? I don't question my father. And if you came up here just to spy on him, you can get out of here right now. You were supposed to be watching her. I'm sorry, I didn't think that she was That's gonna... your trouble, you never think. Carla, who was that on the phone? I don't know, but whoever the hell it was, I hope they didn't hear her scream. Because you know what'll happen to all of us. I'm sorry, Mr. Hesser, it won't happen again. I don't want to hear about your being sorry. There's no room for mistakes. Too late, you've already made too many mistakes. They found me once, they're gonna find me again. All right, all right, take her out the back way. It's time we left. Wait a minute, left. please, I won't tell anyone what I know. I swear I won't. Read the If you have the drug it, shut her up. Then do it. Get something straight here, Hesse. You don't reprimand my men, nor do you give them orders. Your whole operation's a joke, Porter. You're a bunch of amateurs. If it hadn't been for our operation, you'd still be in Statesville. If it hadn't been for Herb Callison, I wouldn't have been convicted. Your Mickey Mouse agents certainly tried to nail me, <laughs> and they failed all these years. You want to go back to prison now, Carlo? Is that what you're trying you to do? You need me more than I need you, Porter, and just remember that. So, uh, don't start threatening me and get your act together if you want this operation to be a success. Do I make myself clear? I'm going back to Landview to uh, talk with my daughter. 
I'll be in touch. Alex, I know that I've got to be the most selfish guy you've ever met in your life. The first thing I want is to have you thrown off the case. Then I ask you to just uh, risk your whole career by throwing the rule book out the window. And then once you finally do get fired, I'd go and I now I'm asking you to beg to get your job back. Listen, but... I know how frantic you are to find Sarah, and I want to find Sarah, too. I just think that we can do it on our own. Alex, Porter is keeping something from us. He always plays things close to the well, desk. He's playing a real weird game right now. When we found Megan and Sarah, did we need his help? No. And then, once he got the news that we did find them, what did he do? He tricked us into coming back to land. No, Alex, the guy lied to us. He sent us totally in an opposite direction. Why? Why was he so hostile when you walked into that safe house? Because I broke the rules. He plays oh. everything by the book, and he wants his agents to be team players. Okay, fine. If you're playing on a team, you share information, right? Yes, Has of he course. ever, ever shared anything, as far as information, with you? No. 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 What? He's done nothing but give you a hard time for being a good job. Did he ever tell you anything about that file? No. No, and you know why? Because there's something in that file that he's trying to keep away from you. We know that that file has to do with Sarah. The closer you work with the Bureau right now, the better our chances are finding her. But once he makes a decision, Bo, he sticks with it. He just fired me. Now, he's not going to hire Alex, me again. Alex, never say never. You won me over. Now, I think you can talk him into giving you another chance. Even if I talk to him, he's not going to turn the file over to me. So we're back to square one again. You just keep begging him for your job back. You keep him busy, I'll take care of the phone. I don't want my job back. I don't want to see this uh, idiot again. Listen, listen, I know that I'm asking a lot right now. I realize that. I want to find my wife. That's all I care about. If I have to cheat, if I have to steal, I'm going to do it. And all I have to do is be charming. Right, right. You mark this down. I owe you a favor. A favor? No, a dozen favors. All right. Let's get our signals straight so that we don't give Porter one damn thing. My relationship with Brenda is over. There is no question about that. Mm -hmm. Then why are you still so confused? Because I don't know why it happened. I don't know if it was my fault or I could have done something to make it work. I don't know. Well, you're the one who told me you fell in love with her the moment you saw her. Right, right. I thought that we were perfect for each other. You know, it was incredible what we went through. But when we got together, it just didn't work out. Well, uh, was it a uh, big house? Michael Grant's money? I mean, mm -hmm. you're always arguing about that. No, no that, that was easy to argue about because it was something to cling on to, but our problems were a lot deeper than that. I just didn't understand what they were. You still don't. No, I got an idea. Brenda was vulnerable. She needed help. I was there, and I just got caught up in it, that's all. I see. So you were just her knight in shining armor, huh? Well, maybe. Maybe I confused uh, help with love. But in the process, I hurt Brenda. I didn't mean to, but I did. And there's no way I'm going to be able to make up for that. I just hope that she finds a man that's going to give her the the love and the happiness that she deserves. And as for me, I've got to make sure that I don't hurt anyone else again like that. Especially you. What do you mean? You've been great with me. Okay, most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I pushed you a couple of times about trying to find out about your past, but beyond that, the first part, Laura, the reason why I got involved with you is because I wanted to help you. And then our relationship started taking a turn. And, and so now you want to put on the brakes so you don't make the same mistakes you made with Brenda, right? Right. Well, that's fine. We're friends, okay? Period. For now. For now. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being honest with me. Right, I know. I 
should return the favor to you. Hey, but that's all right. You will answer those questions when you're ready. Okay? Are you expecting hey, something? Hey, 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 don't, don't panic. All right. Yes? Why, certainly. Hi. Come on in. Sorry about... Lord Jean. I didn't realize that you two had something personal going on. My wanting to spend time with Vicky has nothing to do with you. No, then why is it that you suddenly want to move in and take over? I don't want to take over. I want to help, Tina. You want to help? Why? Because you think that I'm a flake? You think I'm probably not going to be able to... Like, I'm going to screw everything up? Is no, because think? I'm a member of this family and I would like to help my mother. Why are we fighting? I'm sorry, you're right. I've been uh, snapping at everybody. I'm a little tense today. I'm sorry. It's okay. I mean, mm. it's all right. I'm worried about Vicky coming home as well. I mean, I'm very happy that she's getting out of the clinic, but I don't know what she's going to be like when she gets here. I am just afraid that when I see her, I'm going to burst into tears and just ruin everything. Look. Well, maybe it would be good. Look, it, w it would be good if you decided to move in here. Well, I'm thinking of it. I am. At the same time, I don't know whether it would be the best thing for Vicky. I mean, you know how she is. She might think that I'm just wasting my life trying to take care of her. And, well, who cares? My life isn't great these days anyway. Megan, look, I know how hard it is for you. I mean, you're waiting. You don't know anything about Sarah. You don't know where she is, who's got her captive. And I'm sorry. You don't need someone like me to remind you of all that. Look, it's okay. I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. Sarah's always on my mind. I'm just... Sorry that I sent her out there to look for help on her own. I shouldn't have done that. Megan, it was not your fault. You thought it was your only chance to be rescued. And, and Bo and that FAB agent almost got Sarah back. I know. Bo feels really guilty about having lost Sarah. But that's not his fault either. I mean, he's done everything in his power to get Sarah back. And, and Jake's been helping too, right? I think so, yes. Do you think... What does that mean? What, you live with Jake. You know what he no, does. No, I don't you... live with Jake anymore. Why not? Because we broke up, Tina. We broke yeah. up. You broke up. But you guys were so perfect together. Well, right? I guess we weren't as perfect together as we thought. Life on Battley was very exciting. We got home, it got kind of boring. We didn't have as much in common as we thought. Megan. Is it another woman? Charlotte, you know why I'm here. It's because of you. Jake, I don't know if I can believe you anymore. <laughs> you don't mean that. Yes, I do mean that. I just can't shake this feeling that you're more interested in my father than you are in me. That's not true. You, you keep asking so many questions about him. Haven't you ever gone out with a guy who asks questions about your father? Not the way you do. <sighs> All right, all right, I'm sorry. I was just freaked out from hearing your father's voice on the phone, because if he catches me up here, he's going to kick my butt, Charlotte. Uh, that's what you're so upset about? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't want to have to explain myself to him, do you? I'm going to get out of here, okay? I'm out of here. <laughs> what? What are you laughing about? You're afraid of my father? Of course I am. If he's calling from down in the lobby, he's going to be up here right, right away. Jake, Jake, he, he's not in the lobby. I thought you said he didn't know where he was. Well, I don't know exactly where he is, but I know he's not in Landview. You sure about that? I'm positive. He said he would call me when his meeting is through, so I guess he's just leaving there now. Yeah, but still, he'll probably be here in a few minutes, and when he gets here, yeah, he's going to find you here no, no, alone. No, 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 no. no it's, yeah. it's two hours away by car. Two hours? Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, but still, all the same, Charlotte. You know, I'm going to go over to my room. You give me a call in a little bit, and I'll buy you some dinner. What do you say? Relax, Jake. We have plenty of time for our own private party. Let's dance. doing back here? I thought I made it clear. You are no longer employed by the FAB. That's what I wanted to discuss with you, sir. There's nothing to discuss. <laughs> Mr. Porter, I graduated the top of my class from the academy, and I never complained about any of the assignments that I've been given, but some of them could even have been done by civilians, and I never complained. But I have dedicated my life to the FAB, and this job means everything to me. 
Well, apparently, it doesn't mean enough to follow rules and procedures. I just made one mistake. It will never happen again. Please, please, give me a chance to prove myself. You've already proven that you're not fit to be an agent. This little emotional outburst just underscores the point. Oh. The old double standard rearing its ugly head. What are you talking about? I've seen you throw one tantrum after another when things don't go your way, but the second a woman becomes emotional, she's unfit for service. Now don't turn this into some sort of sexist issue. No, you I'm are not. the one that's turned it into an issue. And your feelings on this subject are well known throughout Washington, but no one has called you on it because they're afraid to make waves, not to mention headlines, but I have nothing to lose. I'll slap a discrimination suit on you faster than you can say rules and regulations. You can't be serious. Try me. I will create a scandal in here that will shake the entire department, and I don't think your superiors will be too happy having to investigate one of their own. This is outrageous. Believe me, this is not how I wanted to settle it. I had hoped that you would treat me like you treat the men in the department, and I had also hoped that you would reinstate me based on my talents and my abilities, but if you're not going to play fair, why should I? All right, all right. Maybe... Maybe I was a little hasty. This case just means a lot to me. It has to be done my way. Oh. I don't mind that a bit, Mr. Porter. I will follow your rules to the letter, and I'll never disobey you again. All right. You're reinstated. And as far as we're concerned, no one in Washington has to know anything about this little misunderstanding. Thank you so much. My badge and my gun. Just friends. And roommates. See, uh, Laura needed a place to stay, and the apartment was available, so she moved in, and then I needed a place to stay. And we and... haven't told anyone because we figured no one needed to know. You uh, needed to talk to me, didn't you, Rika? Is that why you're here? Did you have some problem with uh, one of the runaways? No, no, nothing like that. I just need an hour of your time to interview you for my series of articles. Well, I'll let you know the ins and outs of the clinic, but I don't think I should be quoted. You know, I really don't think that I should be any part of that. I think the kids are what's important. Are you free mm -hmm. now? No, I don't have any time. I got to go to a meeting about the Waterfront Street Fair. All right? But we can, we can talk tomorrow if you want. And, and Laura will let you in on the current operations of the clinic. So, uh, I'll see you later. All right. I'll see you later, Rika. Bye-bye. I have a reporter's sixth sense, Laura Jean. And it tells me that there is something else going on between you and Dr. Gorgeous. <laughs> Look, Rika, I think your sixth sense needs a tune-up. And I've got places to go right now. Why don't you want Dan to know that we went to high school together? You certainly don't have anything in your past to be ashamed of. You were one of the most popular girls in high school. I envied you your talent to make friends so easily. All your brothers and sisters were like that. And now you jump at shadows, you're afraid to admit that you know me. I don't know I have to go. Laura, I'm worried about you. I get this terrible feeling that you're in some kind of trouble. Wrong again. Okay, then I'm out of here. Rika, wait. You're right. I'm in trouble, and I don't know what to do about it. Mm, I really love this music, don't you? Not really. I'm sorry, I can't dance on an empty stomach. How about I take you downstairs to the restaurant, and I buy you that dinner, would you say? <laughs> Jake, yeah. there's hundreds of dollars worth of food right here in this room. I know. But it's like, it's, it's, it's fish eggs and I don't, the tiny sandwiches things, I don't like that. I want a pastrami on a roll with mayo. Mayo? Yeah. I think we could find them. Let's... There is chicken, roast beef, ah, pastrami. 
just for you. Mm -hmm. Good? Mm, it's great. Mm -hmm. Anything your little heart desires, you just tell me. Now, where were we? You were dancing. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. How about you put on some music that's a little bit more romantic, mm -hmm. and I'll open up a bottle of champagne for us. Mm, sounds good. It's a little bit harder than opening up a bottle of beer. Ah, well, I think you're a fast learner. Yeah, I could learn, as my friend Lucky would say, to like this a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, so could I. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, wait, you grew up in a house where they had servants and you had champagne every night for dinner. What yeah, well, I wasn't talking about the champagne. I was talking about you and me. I, I think I could really learn to like that. Hold on, I got an idea. We'll make music of our own, what do you say? Okay. And how about, before we start, I'd like to make a toast. Mm -hmm. to this. I saw this in a movie Ooh, once. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, down the hatch. <laughs> what? Down the hatch. <laughs> it's the only toast I know. Oh, I, I love it. Um, after all, it's not the words. But it's the thought that counts. Right. Right. Cheers. Oh! Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jerk, I'm what? sorry. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean that. The champagne stained it. I ruined oh, no, the stress. No, no. Huh? It's Did okay, it's it? okay. I'll, I'll buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlotte. Uh, uh, I got an idea. <laughs> Why don't you go get out of that wet dress, huh? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll be right back. I'll be right here. Jake, oh, who are you calling? I was, uh, I was gonna call housekeeping because I, you know, spilled the champagne, but I can do oh. that later. I thought you were gonna get out of the dress. Uh, what? Uh, my zipper stuck. Could you help me? Oh, sure. <clears throat> my pleasure. Anything interesting? Oh, well, they're notes. Uh, Megan and Sarah in an Amish cottage. This one, the, uh, the root cellar. This one is about Sarah being taken again. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? There's a notation here. It says Middletown. There's a Middletown in Amish country. That means they're still keeping her there. We should have stayed there, Alex. Wait, 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 wait. It's just a note in the margin. It doesn't... We don't know what it means. It means that Porter is keeping something from us. It means that he knew that she was in the Amish country. It's possible that it's a place he's checked and come up empty. Yeah, it's possible he hit the jackpot. If that's true, why hasn't he told us about it? Why hasn't he rescued her? Why because doesn't he tell us what's going on? Maybe he's the kind of guy who just wants to grab all the glory. Maybe he's got some reason for being cautious, some good reason. Well, to hell with him, because I'm going to find my wife. You figure a way to get these papers back in the file. I'm going to go call Megan and Jake. You said something the other day about Jake and Charlotte Hesser. Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it. Tina. Jake is out of my life. I don't really care who he sees. Is he involved with Charlotte? I don't know how involved they are. Oh, I can't even believe that he'd want to say hello to her. Look, just drop it, Tina. Just drop it, drop it, drop it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just... I mean, this is incredible. A couple of months ago, we never even heard the name Hesser, and now every time we turn around, he's doing something else to hurt someone in our family. Yeah, well, at least Johnny D is out of your life. Yeah. Oh, great. All right, this is enough. This no. is really enough of all of this. We're going to get Sarah back, and then we're all going to testify against Johnny D and Carla. We're going to send them to jail for the rest of their life where they belong. There. There's a little optimism for you. Yeah. Can you keep it up? Yeah, well, we have to, for Vicky's sake. I mean, when she comes back here, everything has got to be back to normal. If she senses oh. any kind of anxiety or depression, she's going to think it's because of her. Yeah. She doesn't know anything about Sarah or anything yet. No. Not now. I think we should try and keep it away from her as long as possible. And who knows? Maybe Sarah will be back by the time Vicky gets home. Yeah, I hope so. Hey, optimism, oh. remember? Yeah. 
You know, it's just that Vicky was always the one who knew when you had a problem, and she was always there to talk to you about it and help you solve it. Okay, so we're going to have to do that for ourselves now. Mm. We're going to have to cheer ourselves up and get busy. Come on. Yeah, you're right. Okay, would you, um, will you do me a favor? Will you go upstairs and see how the kids are doing with the signs? Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Hi. Hi, Nate. Hey, how are you? Hi. Okay. Hi, Hi darling. Oh, so much to do for Vicky's homecoming. I'm early. I know. I came to see what I could do. But I want to know what happened to the doctors. How did it go? Oh, well, uh, there was a small problem. Lord, he recognized you. I had a feeling. He, Renee, your pi no, picture has been no, in the... No, Renee, he didn't recognize me. I gave him a phony name and he didn't question me, but... Maybe that's Clint. Hold on. Hello. Tina, it's Bo. Is Megan there? Uh, yeah, she's with the kids. Well, I need to talk to her. I'm in a hurry. This is important. Okay, um, Renee, can you... Can you go find Megan? She's up with the kids. Oh. Tell her that Bo's on the phone and it's really important. Bo, where are you? I mean, have you heard anything from Sarah? Uh, we're working on it. Uh, where's Megan? She's she's coming. Renee went to go get her. Are you guys going to be here tomorrow for Vicky's homecoming? I'll try. I'll try. Well, Megan and I were discussing it, and we don't no, think Sarah? that Vicky should... Have no. you found Sarah? Oh, I don't think so. Bo, hi. It's Megan. Hey, have you found Sarah? We may have a lead. Uh, I need Jake's help. Oh, uh, I don't think that's possible. Now, what do you... Look, I don't know what's going on with you guys, but you really have to get word to Jake. We don't want to blow this chance. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Okay, give me the message and I'll get it to him. Somehow. Rika, you've been so great about not telling anyone my secret and, and not saying anything and about me. And if I can keep one secret, I can keep a dozen. Come on, I'm not here as a reporter. It's not you that I don't trust, it's myself. You know, look, I keep getting myself into these crazy situations, and then just when I think I'm getting myself out of them, I sink deeper and deeper. Like living here with Dan? Yeah, that's part of it. I remember when Faye Delaney came home from college and moved in with her boyfriend. Your mother practically had a heart attack. So you're afraid that she'll find out that you're living with Dan. No, it's not even about that. Then what? Got it. You two are just roommates now, but he wants something more, and you're afraid to commit, right? Look, Rika, I really appreciate you wanting to help me, but I don't think I'm ready to talk oh. about this. I thought I was, okay. but I can't. You know you can count on me to keep my mouth shut. And you can count on me to be a good listener when you're ready to talk. Thanks. From what I know about Dan, he's a great guy. And if your feelings are as strong for him as I think they are, don't let him slip away. Go for it. How could Megan just run off and leave us in the dark like this? Darling, she promised that she would tell us what was going on. I want to know what happened to you at the doctor's. He didn't do the test. He refused to do a paternity test? Or did you change your mind about having one? No, no, he can't do the test without a sample of the father's blood so he can compare the genetic information from the babies to the father's. Well, why can't he get that from medical records? He just can't. I don't know. So I've been sitting here trying to figure out a way to get a sample of Cord's blood. Or Johnny's. I'm sorry, Sean. It was all my fault. Time for parties. I hope so. So, you know, I'm going to go in and I'm going to change myself. I'm going to shower because I can't go down to dinner without a jacket and tie, okay? Okay, well, I'll keep you company while you get changed and then you can come to my room and talk to me while I get dressed. No, I, I like surprises. How about you and put on a nice outfit and surprise me? Well, I'll see if I can find something that will take your breath away. I'm sure you will. See you down in the restaurant? 15 minutes, okay? Yeah, fine. Okay. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Nothing's the matter. I'll see you down in the restaurant. Bye. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh. Not a paint war, huh? No paint this time. Oh, yeah? Just yeah. Uh, practicing your stroke? Actually, I've thought of a solution to our living situation. Now, tell me, mm -hmm. what would you think if I were to paint a line down the middle of the room? On the floor or the ceiling? Doesn't matter. Okay, what's the point? <laughs> well, the point is that then you'd have your side and mm -hmm. I'd have my side and you'd have your private space and I'd have my private little space. So this right here is, this is all my side? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what if I feel like uh, eating a dog in the uh, <laughs> fridge in there? I want to go in the kitchen. Do I have to get you permission oh, to, get, to right. go in the kitchen? Okay, okay. So we just change the boundary. How's this? Yeah, but now your side's smaller than mine. I don't care. It's your apartment. It's fair. And what about my stereo? And my CDs? If your stereo and your CDs. Well, okay. I'll about just change the boundary wait. again, like this. Wait, stop, stop. You are making this... Give me that brush. You are... You're making this much too complicated now. There's no reason why the two of us can't live in here without any boundaries. As long as we're good-mannered, we're gonna be just fine. Okay, if you say so. Well, if we're not going to paint, why don't we, um... um why don't we go what? to the movies, go okay. to the movies. Why don't we go to... And I'll treat you. I'll even buy the popcorn, okay? Is that a no? Oh, that was a yes. I'm uh, right behind you. What are you doing here? Jake, just listen to me. No, no, you listen to me. We have a plan to find Sarah, and it's all based on the fact that you and I have split up. That's what Charlotte thinks. Now, you can't come sneaking into my room every time you get lonely. Oh, that's not why I'm here. Bo called me. He thinks he knows where they're holding Sarah. What? Yes. He found a file in Porter's office. It said something about her being in Middletown, Amish country. No, is, is that where he's headed right now? No, he's coming here because he wants to talk to you and to get some other people to help him. <laughs> Sarah's not there. That's what it said. No, I don't office. give a damn what it said. Sarah's with Carlo. I just heard her voice. You heard Sarah? Yes, Carlo called Charlotte in the room. She was supposed to be alone. She thought it was room service, gave me the phone while I was on it. He was trying to figure out who's on the other end. I heard Sarah scream in the background. She yelled for help. Oh, my God. Yeah, Carlo it, told Charlotte that he's at a meeting that's two hours away. Amish country only takes an hour to get to. Look, it could have been a trick. They could have made you try and think that, that, that she was in that room and that, that she was alive. Now, why would they do that? Carlo didn't even have an idea that I was going to be in there. No, Sarah is with Carlo. I know it. Well, so how did she sound? Did she sound like she was in pain, like she was hurt? She sounded frightened, but I don't think she's hurt. Those guys don't want to hurt her. You don't know what they want to do to her. Why are they holding her? What do they want? I don't know. I don't know. I'm doing my best to find out. Charlotte's talking to me. She's saying things that she doesn't think are important, but they are. Slowly, I'm starting to bit and piece this puzzle together. Soon we'll find the answer. I just want this whole thing to be over. I just want Sarah back. I want you back. I, I know everything that went on downstairs in the lobby. It was just an act. I know that you didn't mean those things, but it really seemed real. Uh. No, no, not yet. Oh, oh, hurry up. I'm ready for dinner. I hope you like my house. Tina, you have got to simplify this whole thing for yourself by telling Cord the truth. You've got to tell him what happened on Batterley, why you slept with Johnny, who the father Renee, might... I can't. I'm going to lose him. I can't. He is not going to abandon you. <sighs> Darling, he's going to find out that you tried to save everybody's that, life on Batterley. That is not going to make him like it, and he's not going to accept it. It's going to ruin everything, unless it turns out by some... Unless it turns out that Cord is the father. And if it's Johnny... I'm not going through with the pregnancy. Tina, you can't make a decision like that without doing a deep searching of your soul. <gasps> Renee, I need you to help me get a sample of Cord's blood. Now, will you please help me with that? I have no idea how you do something like well, that. Well, I don't either, but we're just going to have to try and figure it out, okay? You know, I don't like being a part of this at all. That must be that insurance salesman. Renee, will you please help me? Darling, you can help yourself by telling Cord the truth. Where is Heron? 
Uh, somebody's bringing over some forms having to do with Vicky's disability insurance. I'll get it. Disability insurance? Yes. Renee, I'm going to get the door. <laughs> I think I want to learn some more about disability insurance myself. <laughs> Hi, baby. What are you doing here? What? We need to talk. I have nothing to say to you except for goodbye. Just... Tina. What has happened? Obviously, she's a little bit on edge. Look, just get out of here, okay? Just just leave. Tina, I... I said you get out of here. Look, I'm not going anywhere until we talk. <sighs> Perhaps the Landview police could persuade you to leave. Please. I don't like threats, Mrs. Buchanan. And I don't like harassment. Get out of this house. Tina, I came here because I was worried about you. Now, I'm calling oh. the police. Now, why did you go to the doctor? Hmm? The doctor? It, look, don't deny it. All right, I saw you go into Dr. Farrell's office in Pine Valley. If there's something wrong with you, why don't you go to a doctor here in Landview? Huh. This was not a coincidence that you were in the park this morning, was it? You've been following me. You followed me to Pine Valley? Now, what's wrong with looking after the woman that I love? The woman that you love? Yeah, you're treating me more like an enemy. Now, just stay out of my life. Tina. Just stay out of my life. Get out of this house. Now. I mean, he's been following me. That man is a psychopath. I have no idea how Renee. obsessed he is with you. You said to me that Carlo promised that Johnny would keep out of my life. What? Yeah, well, it's obvious now that he is not going to obey his father's... his father's orders. Oh, God, I can't imagine. What if Court had been here? What if Court overheard Johnny saying that he saw me going to the doctor in Pine Valley? Then you would have had a lot of explaining to do. <sighs> Darling, you have got to bring this to an end. You have got to tell Cord the truth and face whatever happens. Only if Cord is the father. I have to get a sample of Cord's blood. And I think I know a way to do it. Come on, Jake. Why don't you let me in? <coughs> I, uh... I'm on a phone call right now. Could be a possible job. How about I meet you down in the restaurant, okay? It's okay, it's okay. I don't mind waiting. You can hurry up. I'm starving. Okay, all right. You, uh... You tell Bo not to go to Middletown, that Sarah's not there, right? Charlotte may be feeding you the wrong information. I don't think so, Megan. You're very trusting of her. Since Charlotte is innocent, she had nothing to do with Sarah's kidnapping. Well, gee, I guess she got you twisted all around her little finger, doesn't she? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm just scared about all of this. Dick, I miss you, okay? Just tell her to go away. I Let can't, us talk for a few minutes. I can't do that. I'm sorry. I don't want to take the risk. Look, listen, listen, don't do this to yourself. Please. Now, after I leave, after I'm gone, I want you to leave and don't be here when I get back. Why? You and Charlotte want to hit the sack? Sorry. All right. I have to go. You tell Bo how to reach me, okay? <laughs> hey, handsome. You look sensational, my dear. Definitely worth the wait. Mm. Nothing like good news to give you an appetite, huh? Well, listen, about Middleton, I don't want you to get disappointed. I know it's a long shot, but if we pull it off, then uh, you are back home, Paradise. Would you watch the road, please? Good heavens. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm visualizing Porter crawling around on the ground after you dumped ammo all over the floor. <laughs> it worked, didn't it? Got those papers back in that folder. Yeah. You sure you didn't catch on? Oh, positive. In the academy, they taught me how to uh, fool the enemy, but most importantly, they taught me how to keep them fooled. Hmm. <laughs> what are you looking at? Did you hear what you just said? Call Porter the enemy. I never thought I'd feel that way about somebody in the FAB. You probably never thought you'd be working with a jerk like him. Well, I certainly do have more questions than I had two months ago. Like, why does your regional director hold back on you, hmm? That's one of them, yes. I mean, it would be so simple if he would just tell me what he's doing. How does he expect me to accomplish anything working in the dark? Hey, there's something strange going on here, Alex. And when I find out what it is, I'm gonna let you know. 
Don't you pull that porter stuff with me. We're partners. Not anymore. Look, you've already stuck your neck out too far. So I'm gonna drop you and your badge and your gun off, and then I'm going on to Middletown by myself. Oh, no, you're not. Listen. You weren't lying to Porter when you said uh, this job means everything to you. Now, if you step out of line again, he's never going to reinstate you. I don't care how many times you threaten him with lawsuits. Bo, my priorities have changed. Your, your, your wife's safety means more to me than anything, and I'm not giving up on this case until we find her. And that's a promise, Paradise. Would you please watch the road before we miss the Landview exit? Tomorrow, does Roseanne have a baby on the way? She's all aglow on the season premiere of Roseanne. Then, meet three families under one roof. The newlyweds, the expectant couple, and the landlords. They're all in one thing in common. They're married people. Don't miss the special preview tomorrow. Now, stay tuned for General Hospital, following an ABC News Brief next.